Hey, welcome back guys to another video in MLB The Show 19 and we'll be continuing with our Moneyball edition of the Tampa Bay Rays franchise in this one heading into year number two. Um, we left off at spring training, so I sim spring training. Um, I set up the rotation, I set up the lineup, so we're all ready to go. I'm going to show you guys that. Um, we made some moves in the off season, especially those two recent uh, trades where we got Jeff McNeil from the Mets and Nick Senzel from the Reds. Um, so this team is looking pretty good. Um, I'm pretty sure I left off on that opinion um, in the last video. And we did good in spring training. I know that doesn't necessarily mean anything, but that's pretty cool. We're still only ranked first. Only ranked first. We're still ranked first uh, because the, I don't think the other teams have uh, set up their 25-man roster just yet. Um, yeah, we're still in spring training technically. So we'll see what that is in just a second. But the pitching rotation looks like this. Uh, we got Domingo Herman as number one. We can kind of switch him out with Montes just based off the overall. Um, we got Marco Gonzalez, number three. Of course, Montes is number two. Um, I like to put the lefty, try to break up. Technically, you're not breaking them up because it, it's on a cycle. Um, but at least in here, put him as number three. Kind of breaks it up. You're not going through the cycle, but uh, then we have Yanni Chirinos as number four and Tyler Glass now to round things off as number five. And I'm not too uh, not too optimistic about what he's going to do in the regular season with that 6.75 ERA coming off last season where he really struggled. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Everybody else did good. We'll see how uh, Glass now does. All right. So Erlin is going to be our long man. Not a good spring, so maybe he'll turn that around. Trevino, Stanek, Santana, Minter, all in middle relief. The only guy there who struggled in spring training was Stanek. And then Castillo is going to be our setup man in Alvarado, uh, who had a very nice spring training, didn't allow a run. Um, he is going to be our closer. So very much the same as last year, and the same goes for the offense. Uh, we just switched things up a little bit. We got Austin Meadows in the outfield in right, Tommy Pham in left, and we have Nick Senzel in center field. Um, I mixed up the infield a little bit. I got Voigt at DH. Uh, McNeil against righties is playing... No, McNeil is playing second base against righties and lefties. We got Narvaez, of course, as our catcher. And then Robertson against... Trying to remember because it's been a day. Uh, but Robertson is playing against uh, righties at first base. Yandy Diaz is playing for is playing first against lefties. At third base, we got Camargo against lefties and Brandon Lowe against righties. And then at shortstop, we got Willie Adamas. So hopefully he can uh, turn things on moving forward into the regular season. So that's going to be our team going into 2020, and hopefully we can come out in a good position at the end of the year again. So really quickly here, let's see where we are in the standings. Uh, we're ranked ninth, so we have dropped a little bit since last year, but again, we'll kind of see, we'll have to wait and see how everyone performs. Um, pretty optimistic about the season as a whole, but again, we'll have to wait and see. So any top prospects? Completely forgot to check this. So we got Wander Samuel Franco uh, is seventh. Anybody else? Uh, Brendan McKay is 26th. And I think, nope. Matthew Libertori is 42. And I do think that is it. So we got three top 50 prospects. Not too bad. And um, yeah, let's get into the regular season. Um, I'm going to sim, but I'll meet you guys back at the draft once we get to the draft. And we'll kind of see it where things stand at that point. Okay, so we got this trade offer from the Colorado Rockies, Colton Welker for Alexander Palma. Now, Palma is one of the guys, the prospects that we picked up in the offseason to kind of use in a trade. Um, Colton Welker is a lot better than I thought. Uh, he's 22, A potential, 72 overall. Now, he is in the majors for the Rockies. Um, but for us right now, he's probably going to stay at triple A. Um... Little worried about his morale, but you know, I 
we just don't really have a spot for him right now. But he's a good guy to have on the team. If he continues to improve and develop, you know, he can play a role next season um, or later this season. Um, and he costs less than Palma does. And, uh, you know, I'll take that. So, I think we're going to do this. Palma is also only a 59. Um, how old is he? 23, and he's older. So, I think this is a good trade for us all the way around. And uh, we're going to go through with it. But again, I'll meet you guys at the draft. All right, guys, so here are the results of the 2020 draft. Um, not as good as last year, but we do have a couple 80s in here, so it's not too bad. Um, we got an 87 in the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That is the fifth round because we had one extra pick earlier on. Um, but it's pretty far down to get an 87 potential. Uh, so John Turner, he's 50, 59 overall. He's a B potential, 22. Um, I really liked his walks per nine. That's why, why I got him. Uh, he's from Australia, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, not a bad pick, especially for that late in the draft. Uh, we got Todd Ramirez in, as our last pick, 72 overall. I mean, 72 potential, 67 overall. Again, very good walks per nine. He's 20, um, so maybe he's probably not going to come in to play very much in this franchise. I'm expecting uh, that to be the case. Uh, we got Jared Kipling here, a shortstop, 1974 potential. He's a 61. He's trending up. He's got a very good uh, contact, uh, a lot of speed, good good base stealing ability. Um, fielding is horrible, and um, yeah, not too much else. He's got a pretty high rated clutch attribute, so that's good. So he's got some, you know, some parts of his game that that are there, and and some of them that are missing. Um, but he is trending up. We got Alan Murphy, a center fielder, who's 1975 potential. He's a 58 overall and a C potential. Of course, he's got speed. He's got decent fielding if he continues to develop it. Um, but there's not too much else there. A little bit of contact versus left. Um, so not much of a pick there. Uh, 80 potential for 19-year-old starting pitcher Jose Esquivel. Um, he's a 57 overall. So he's got some time before he reaches the majors, um, kind of in the middle of the pack for the most of his attributes here. He's pretty low on Ks per nine and homers per nine. Uh, homers per nine is a little more worrisome there. Um, but, you know, we'll see how, how he turns out if he develops or not. Um, our second pick was Nelson Diaz, a center fielder, 83 potential. He's 22. Um, he's got a lot of power. Uh, he's a good fielder. He's got a lot of speed. So, you know, he could be someone, definitely could be someone in the major leagues. Um, if he just increases the contact a little bit more, maybe his, his discipline and vision at the plate, um, he'll be a good player. Um, durability doesn't really account for much in this one because the injuries are off. So not a bad pick there. Um, and then our first pick was Matt Cedeno, who's 18 center fielder, 84 potential. You'd like your first pick to have a higher potential than that, but he is trending up. He's only 18. Um, he's got very good contact. Um, needs to work on his fielding. He's got a lot of speed. Um, he looks like he's going to end up being pretty pretty decent uh, with his vision, his discipline, his clutch. Um, so not a bad pick, but again, not the best pick if he doesn't you know, develop uh, a bit more. Um, but again, not a horrible draft. Not really a bad draft. we got four Bs here. Um, a couple C's, uh, not as good as last year's, but not too bad. Um, so yeah, while we're here, uh, we'll take a look at how the team is doing right now. We are currently 32 and 29. We had a pretty rough second half of April right after that trade was made. Um, and we've been trying to, uh, we've been kind of hanging around 500 since then. Um, but yeah, not, not horrible. We still have a lot of time. Um, we are currently nine games back in the division. And in the wild card, only three out. So we're definitely still in it at this point. I think most teams are still in it at this point, as it is only the beginning of June. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's continue simming, and I'll meet you guys back at the trade deadline, unless anything else comes up, of course. And we'll we'll kind of see what what moves we might have to make, um, and see where the team stands at that point. Okay, so we have a completely different outlook on this season right now. Um, since the All-Star break, we've gone, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 
and three. That's pretty good. We were one game over going into the All-Star break. I was pretty worried about the team. And now we are 15 games over. That's a pretty quick, pretty big turnaround. Um, yeah, I got to see what we need to do. I got to check on how the players are doing. Uh, see what moves we need, we need to make just as the team itself without bringing anyone else in. Um, Herman was struggling, but he's doing a little bit better as of late. Um, as you can see, he's caught a little bit of fire there. Uh, Chirinos is doing pretty well. Montas, not too bad himself. Glasnow is struggling. I think we may move him. Um, he's just really... I know he's trending up, and he should be a good pitcher, but... I mean, 200 plus innings over two years for us, and his ERA is like, what, 6.2? Um, that's that's not gonna fly um then we have marco gonzalez who again is performing pretty well himself um maybe we can call it blackburn he's pretty doing pretty good in, in the triple a um yarbrough is doing pretty well mckay's doing well he's he's starting to move up the the rankings here um de leon is in single a. I, I, we should really move on from de leon um nova's not doing too bad maybe we put him in a trade and move him um, that is some money that we could clear up. Ray Gomez performing pretty well. One of the guys we got in the draft last year. Um, Libertori's doing good. Clanahan's only in single A. Mike Franco. So a lot of guys here are doing pretty well, except for Tyler Glass now. Um, so we probably will move him, probably move Nova. Um... Castillo's having a pretty dominant year so far. Alvarado's doing well himself. Um, Cutliff. Wasn't he our first pick? I think so. Um, Cutliff is performing very well in the minors. I pressed the wrong button. Hold on. Let's get back to the relievers. Here we go. Santana's doing great. ERA under two. Stanek is doing pretty well himself. So that uh, month in spring training where he didn't quite do too well was was not what he was planning for the regular season. Uh, Trevino, nothing compared to last year, but he is having, you know, a, a decent season. As long as his ERA doesn't jump up over four, but he is trending down, so I don't really know what to think. I'm not too sure what his tendencies are um, in terms of developing or declining, so we'll have to kind of wait and see about him. AJ Minter's having a good year. Robbie Erlin's having a respectable year at 3.5. Uh, with his ERA, so again, pretty good seasons for most of the pitchers here, all the way around, except for Glass. Now uh, we have to move. He's just doing so bad. I was not expecting that. Um, Rowe is even doing really well in the minors. Um, you know, our 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 second tier of pitchers that we're you know we're, we have on the forty man roster that we can call up if need be, uh, they're performing really well too. Except for Cleric. Um, so this is really really looking pretty good for us right now on the pitching side of things at least. Narvaez is not really... Meh. You could definitely get that average up at the very least. Um, I don't mind the seven home runs because that's kind of what I expected from him. But uh, I definitely didn't expect the 29 home runs. But you know, definitely, especially if the power is going down again that average needs to come up. So we do have him on a three year deal, um, three million a year. So we'll kind of see how he progresses. But for right now, he's still our starting catcher, of course. Uh, Kneiser, if I'm saying that right, 232 average, you know, he's okay. He provides defense or he should be providing defense for us. Yep, pretty good there, one error. Uh, what's this, war, positive, positive war. So that's good. Um, Perez is always a guy that we can call up uh, for the backup catcher role if we need to. So he's always there in AAA. Uh, Luke Voigt is having a better season than last season at this point. So that's um, nice to see. 19 homers, 282 average. McNeil performing like crazy. 346. He is so good. So good at getting those hits. Not just in this game, in real life too. Uh, Brandon Lowe, seven homers, hitting around 250, 260. Joey Wendell is really struggling. Hmm. He 
he is going to get expensive after this season, so maybe we move him. Uh, Robertson's doing okay, 264, 11 homers. Camargo, 256, 12 homers. Again, he's not really performing quite as good as I expected, but I don't want to just move him just... I don't want to move him just yet. Um, you know, we have him under contract for three more seasons after this one at only 800 a year. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, Yandy Diaz performing 277, six homers. Uh, Adamas, the power's up a bit, but still only, he's not even hitting 250, so I don't know. We got Matsumoto, who we drafted last year, who's, you know, not looking too bad himself. And then, of course, we have Franco, who's not doing too much offensively in the minors, but he is there. Uh, you know, he's, he's up and coming. And the same for Velasquez. Um, not quite as high of a prospect, especially since he's 25 already, but still, we got some guys to try out at shortstop, aside from Adamas, if he gets a little bit worse off. Uh, but we'll see how he progresses. Tommy Pham, 261, 18 homers. Senzel, 265, 10 homers. Um, Meadows, again, performing really well. Um, so yeah, I think the, the guys that we need to look to move um, definitely, probably Joey Wendell, and definitely, um, who was it? Glass now, and a smart move would probably be to move Nova. We don't really have to, it's probably, it could be a good idea to keep him, um, just as backup if we need it. Um, you know, but, I don't know, because, I mean, he is only on a one-year deal, even though, I, I was really just thinking of moving him moving him for the contract that he has just to save some money but he's only on a one-year deal so it's not really gonna affect us too much um depending on who we get for these guys when we move them so i guess that'll kind of determine whether we move nova or not to stay under 50 million um but yeah i'm gonna go look at trade options see if we can get anyone for glass now see if we can get anyone for joey wendell and i'll update you guys with that once i find figure something out Alright, so we're going to be making a trade here for a starting pitcher and a second baseman, both prospects still. Carter Keeboom, of course, as people know already, um, he's on the Mets. The Mets seem to have like a bunch of up-and-coming guys. They got Bobby Witt Jr., uh, Shed Long. I don't know how they got these guys, but they did. Um, anyway, kind of the opposite of what they're doing in real life because they're sending every single prospect they have just out of town uh so carter keyboom we're gonna acquire him he's gonna be someone that maybe depending on how quickly he develops uh we can either use him or we can use him in a trade obviously but um i feel like we might be able to use him once some of these guys get a little more expensive um like maybe robertson um he might get a little more expensive but we still have him for another season um you know, Lowe's still on contract for a while, but again, he's going to get a little more expensive, so it might actually come in into play a little bit more uh, next season or the year after, and we can actually use Kaiboom. Uh, the other guy is Connor Connell. Now, I saw him on the top 50 prospect list. He looks really good. The only problem for me is the homers per nine. Um, maybe the clutch a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that right now. Um, they have him in the majors. He's got an ERA of almost six, but he's 20. He's an A potential. He's already a 72. I really like his walks per nine and his hits per nine. They're going to continue to go up. Um, so I'm willing to take him on. Um, and I think he could come into play with us uh, probably in the next year or two uh, when some of these guys get a little more expensive. Um, Otherwise, of course, we can use him in a trade. Uh, but we're going to be sending over Tyler Glass now, who we desperately need to get rid of because it's just not working out for him in the game in Tampa Bay. Uh, we're going to be moving on from Joey Wendell, who's going to get a little more expensive, and he's not really performing quite at all this season, hitting 200. And then we're going to be adding in... I tried to add in... Uh, where is he? Ivan Nova, but they didn't quite get the deal done. I didn't really think it would, but I checked. Um, tried Jose de Leon, didn't work, uh, tried Anthony Banda, didn't work, so we're going to be using Brent Honeywell, who is, who's, who's 24 years old already, um, not necessarily someone that I, I look at and I'm excited about potentially having a part in the, in the franchise moving forward, 
um, especially since we got some of these guys down here in Gaston, uh, McClanahan, Libertori, Gomez. Um, you know, we got some younger guys coming up. So I think this trade is going to be good. Um, doesn't really quite do anything for us now, um, but we didn't necessarily need to. Um, it definitely saves us some money and it definitely helps us out for the future. So we're going to go through with it. Um, and I think that might be the only trade that we make. Uh, we have 25. Oh, I don't want Connell on the Major League roster. I want to call it Blackburn. See how he does. And is Kaiboom? Yeah, Kaiboom is up. Who should we call up instead of Kaiboom? Or should we keep now? He's struggling. Send him back down to Triple A. Maybe call up Welker? Or Matsumoto? Call Matsumoto. Add him to the 40 man. Call him up. See how he does. Should be fun. <laughs> um, I think the lineups are still good. Yeah. And then the pitching rotation, we just need to put Blackburn in there. So everything is set. Uh, still looking good for the team as a whole. We're ranked seventh now overall, so we have gone up there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sim through the rest of the year right after I show you the All-Stars because I forgot to do that. Uh, so in the NL, we got Kershaw, Hendricks, DeGrom, Greinke, Richards, uh, Reed, and Hudson, Doolittle, Diaz, Hayter, and Jansen. Contreras and Molina are catchers, Belt, Abreu, and Vado at first, Frazier and Hernandez at second, Arenado and Bryant at third, Turner, Seeger, and Taylor at short. In left field, we got Harold Ramirez, Jock Peterson, center field, we got Acuna, and right field, we got Bellinger, Blackman, Harper, and Eaton. Now, in the AL, we got Severino, Sale, Clevenger, Keichel, Heaney, and Corbin Martin. Is that a mistake? Wait, what? It has to be a mistake. There's no way. Um, anyway, relievers. We got Stanek. Stanek made the all-star team for us as a the only reliever, technically, in uh, the AL. And then the closers. This is why I say technically, because these are technically closers. Uh, we got Givens, Ozuna, Kalame, Alvarado made it for us. Chapman and Hand. Now, at catcher, we got Sanchez, Grandal, Jansen, and Alfaro. First base, we got Olsen, Vogelbach, and what did they do? Alonzo. Why would you trade him? Mets, what's wrong with you? Uh, second base, moving on, I'm not angry. Uh, second base, Altuve and Yolmer Yol Sanchez. Third base, Bregman, Ramirez, Rendon, and Lugo. Shortstop, Bogarts, Mondesi. And then in the outfield, we got Upton, JD, and Mancini in left. Trout and Bradley Jr. in center and Castellanos and Betts in right. So our two all-stars are reliever Ryan Stanek and closing pitcher Jose Alvarado. So two guys separate from last year, though. Last year's... I'm surprised actually Meadows didn't make it. He's having a good year, but I guess other guys are having better years. Oh, wait. What about McNeil? McNeil didn't make it? What? In 346? Come on. All right, so I think we're going to move forward with this team. Only made one move. Didn't really, uh, you know, impact the major league level too much. Um, but yeah, we're going to finish simming the season. I'll meet you guys at the end of the year and see how the team did. And hopefully we're in a position to uh, to make the playoffs. And uh, hopefully we're there when I meet you guys in just a second. All right, guys. So the season is over. And if you can see here in the playoff bracket, we unfortunately just missed out. Um, now, at the right after the right after the uh, trade deadline, we really had a rough, rough go of things here in August. Um, we bounced back though. We bounced back in September. I mean, we finished off with a sweep of the Yankees. Um, I thought we were gonna make it, but the Athletics, who must have gotten hot when we got really cold, um, overtook us, and then they just continued to play well. And they just beat us out here. Um, yeah, really unfortunate. We we had a shot to get there. Um, ah, it sucks. We came really close. Um, but yeah, we finished at 89 and 73. We're ranked fifth overall. Pretty good season. The Athletics, they made that late season push. They made another one of their pushes. Uh, they're really good at doing that. They're ranked 19th, but they made it anyway. 
Um, two money ball franchises right here. <laughs> uh, fighting for the wild card. All right, so let's see about awards. Not player of the month, no, awards. Okay, here we go. So Chirinos and Robertson got gold gloves. MVP in the AL went to Bregman, in the NL went to Harper. Nash, uh, the Cy Young went to Corbin in the National League, and Chris Sale again in the AL. Bogarts got the batting title, it's all oh, Boston. <laughs> batting title in the AL, Marte got the batting title in the NL. Doolittle got the reliever of the year in the NL and Ozuna in the AL. The rookie of the year went to Art K, who's 19, 78 overall. He looks good. 20 homers. Nice. And Keston Hayara in the NL. Average pretty low there. Surprisingly, he's definitely a better hitter than that. Um, moving on, we got uh, Hank Aaron Awards. Mike Trout and Ronald Acuna Jr. Um, gold gloves in the NL went to Marquez, Ramos, Freeman, Albies, Lowry, who's actually playing, uh, Crawford, Harold Ramirez, Roselle Herrera, and Gregory Polanco. The, uh, the silver sluggers went to Madison Bumgarner, Wilson Ramos, Goldschmidt, Jeanette Arenado, Chris Taylor, Harper, Soto, and Acuna Jr. And then in the AL, we got for the gold gloves, Yanni Chirinos, who we know, Gary Sanchez, Tyler Austin, Daniel Robertson. I want to see how Tyler Austin did, actually. 35. They, uh, but he hit 224. They they kept offering me Baltimore. They kept offering a trade for Tyler Austin, but they wanted, like, really good performing prospects each time. And it's just like, no. Three times in a row, and they just go for, for the better prospect each time. It's like, why would I why would I do that if I just said no to the last one? Um, he didn't have a bad year, though. He got over uh, three, 30 homers, so that's nice, but I think it's safe to say we made the right choice for now. Um, so, moving forward, we got Daniel Robertson, who we know got the gold glove for us, Matt Chapman, Lindor, Stanton, Inciarte, and Betts. For the Silver Sluggers, we got Castellanos, who had a really good power year. Jeez, 37 homers. Yeah, he's not really necessarily a power guy. Maybe it has to play a little bit with the ballpark in Detroit, but... 37. That's pretty good. Um, then again, remember what JD did when he left <laughs> Detroit. He just went off. Um, we got Grandal, Olsen, Altuve, Bregman, Lindor, Trout, Upton, and Stanton. Alright, so those are the awards. Um, and then we'll just quick take a look quickly at how everyone did. We got Marco Gonzalez, the 3-5 ERA, won 11-7. Uh, in 195 innings, pretty much. Whip of 1.2. So he had a nice season. Nice season for us. Um, I had called a Blackburn, if you guys remember. But he just wasn't doing very well. He had 4.760 array, but so I called up Yarbrough. And look what Yarbrough did. <laughs> he got a couple of wins um, where Blackburn didn't, but he literally had the exact same ERA in the exact same amount of innings pitched. So... Uh, not really much better there. Montes went four, had a 4.14 ERA. He had 16 wins though, just under 200 innings, 1.2 WHIP. Uh, Chirinos, same, pretty much the same with the WHIP there. Uh, 12 and seven, and very close to 200 innings, 3.67 ERA. And Herman went 11 and 11, 1.3 WHIP, uh, almost 200 innings, 3.82 ERA. Um, so not a bad performance here by the rotation as a whole. Um, number five spot is kind of up in the air right now between Yarbrough and Blackburn, but we'll kind of see what, what happens moving forward. Uh, Castillo, 265 ERA, so he did really well out of the bullpen for us. Santana as well, 242 in just about 50 innings. We got Trevino, kept his ERA under four. That's what I was looking for. Uh, in 83 innings, Stanek, uh, struggled a little bit in the second half. Uh, his ERA went up to 3.4, um, but he pitched quite a lot. And uh, he did pretty good. Look at the strikeouts to innings pitched. That's, uh, that's a nice gap there. Uh, AJ Minter went up in the second half a little bit with his ERA. 3.64 he finished with in 54 innings. Um, and Robbie Erlin, 3.49 in 120 innings. And then Alvarado actually did better in the second half, lowering his ERA to 3.84. Um, I, 
can't remember if it was at the All-Star, not the All-Star break, the trade deadline or a little bit later in the season. His ERA was around 4-3, I think. Um, somewhere around there. So he did a little bit better in the second half. Um, I'm a little unsure about where I stand on him. Um, about whether we keep him or at least keep him in the closing role. I don't think we will. Um, but yeah, that'll be for, you know, the offseason to figure out. Uh, Narvaez hit 257, 14 homers, so definitely a down year for him, um, especially after last season. Uh, so again, we'll have to see and see how he performs. If he's not performing, um, I don't want to keep him on this contract, so we'll have to move him, but we'll see what happens there. Um, Perez, he did play in the majors. One for one. Nice. Um, and then we got Kniser. Um, 27 hits, one homer, 11 RBIs, hit 223. Uh, eh, not very good, but I didn't expect him to do too much on offense. Um, War was positive, he only had the one error, so he uh, he performed where we wanted him to in defense. Uh, Luke Voigt hit the 30 homer, uh, 30 homer mark, hit 277, almost 600 at bats, 117 RBIs. Uh, he did really well. Jeff McNeil hit 320. That is Jeff McNeil. Uh, Brandon Lowe hit just under 260, 10 homers. We're probably going to move on from him, I think, because he's going to get a little expensive, and he's really not putting up numbers that you know make me want to keep him there. He's not even full-time for us because he does struggle. He was struggling against lefties, I think, uh, so I wanted to keep him out there. Uh, Robertson hit 261 with 14 homers, almost 60 RBIs, so he did pretty good. Um, he's trending up. He's an 80 now. Uh, Camargo, 262, 18 bombs. Uh, a little bit better than last year. That's for sure. So hopefully he keeps improving. Yandy Diaz, 282, 10 homers. So his average went up a little bit. Power went down, though. Uh, Adamas, 263. So he improved upon last year. 16 homers, 71 RBIs. Uh, Matsumoto, who we called up, 259 and 54 at-bats. Tommy Pham, 265 with 27 homers. Nick Senzel, 267 with 17 homers. And Austin Meadows, 294, 25 homers. Still performing very well. Um, considering signing him to an extension at some point. But uh, we still got some time to figure that one out. All right, so not a bad season overall by the team. Uh, just fell short of the playoffs. Just fell short there. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the we, we performed well. We were right there. Uh, the Athletics just kind of outplayed us at the end there, and they took advantage of uh, when we had that cold streak in August. Um, so good by them. Um, but yeah, next year we should be back. We should be ready to go again. Uh, we'll continue this in the next video. We will actually sim the playoffs just to see what, go what happens there. Um, the Astros have defeated the Mets in the 2020 World Series. I'm sorry, McNeil. Maybe you would have made the difference. You still have that chance in real life, though. Um, okay, so the Astros have defeated the Mets in the 2020 World Series, as we mentioned. And really quickly, just curious. World Series MVP went to Altuve. And postseason went to Bregman and Ramos, who had a really nice year, I think. Eh, not really nice, but he had a solid year. Um, I just remember seeing him. He got the Silver Slugger and, I think, the Gold Glove. Uh, but yeah. We'll be back in the off season in the next video. Um, oh, the Mets got swept. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> got swept after sweeping that, the Nationals. I will take it. I will take it for a sweep of the Nationals in the NLCS. Um, all right. So yeah, we're gonna pick this one back up in the next video with the off season um, and see how things go from there. Uh, a couple guys that are definitely going to have to be moved, I think, um, depending on their contracts. One, like I said, is probably going to be Brandon Lowe. Um, probably move on from Tommy Pham. See what we can get for him. Um, and yeah, maybe a pitcher or two, but we'll see. Uh, probably going to let Nova go. What did he do, actually? He got three wins. 3-3-8 three, three, and 10 innings, 10.2 innings. Not bad. Uh, so he got to play, so it wasn't a total waste of a contract there. Um, Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, we'll pick it up in the next one with the off season. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, and uh, I will see you in the next one.